Hello, welcome to Chapter 3 Podcast, the show for readers of science fiction, fantasy, and romance. This is Season 3, Episode 19, and uh, me and Izzy are here to talk about witchy romances. Specifically, we're going to be discussing Go Hex Yourself by Jessica Clare. This was the one we read for the episode that was voted mm-hmm. on by our patrons, so thank, thank you to our patrons. Um, but thank goodness they picked also- a good one. <laughs> I had a moment I was like oh I hope they don't pick one of these that I don't think is gonna be good yeah it was a good pick um so we're gonna talk about that and then just more broadly talk about this witchy romance trend and as always if you want to join you can join us on patreon or channel memberships for access to exclusive bonus content for every episode we do appreciate people who want to support what we do that way and this episode's bonus content is going to be talking about all the book things at New York Comic Con, little known good place to go for books. So, because I was just there. <laughs> I just was like, how can I make Bethany tell me all about New York Comic Con without me having to do a lot of talking in the bonus episode? Done. I can, I can, I can do that. We'll do it. We'll do it for bonus content. It'll be fun. Um, so we read Go Hex Yourself, which has been on my TBR forever. So Same. This was a good reason Same. to read it. Mm-hmm. I was very happy what to did, get it off my TBR. Yeah. What did you What did you think? Uh, okay. I was very nervous going in. So this is not my first Jessica Clare. I've read her previous billionaire romances a okay. long, long time ago in my early romance journey. I enjoyed them then. I don't know how they hold up now, obviously. Um, but I was nervous and excited to read this one because mostly it heard good things and I felt like I, I went into it like pretty open-minded. Um, but I've not liked a lot of the witchy books I've read previously, but I felt like this was just like a fun time. I felt like we Mm -hmm. had stakes. We had like some grit to the story, like actual like meaning and not just like, oh, hey, I'm a witch and nothing happens, like barely any magic. Like, I really liked that those elements of it going in. But yeah, I I had a blast reading it. I kind of didn't want to put it down, <laughs> which I feel like is always a good sign in a, like, rom-com. Yeah. Um, I'm also kind of hit and miss for witchy romances. Sometimes I like them. Sometimes I don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and I enjoyed this. I don't know that I find it super memorable. Like, it's not something that that I think is going to stick with me a long time, but I liked it. And I think the main thing that I was kind of impressed with was I really didn't like, what's the guy, what was his name? Uh, Ben. Ben. I really didn't like Ben at the beginning. Uh And I was like, is this going to be something where by the end I'm like, she could do better. But I liked him by the end. She turned it around, which is hard to do. I mean, I feel like you, we we found out why he was so dislikable at the beginning, almost, yeah. in a weird way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it made sense. Yeah. So that was nice. Like, I, I could, I, when I, I was reading your review, and I was like, yeah, that makes sense you wouldn't like him. But then, like, he does, he proves himself to be worthy of. He does. Of he does. So, life. like, I was rooting for them to be together by the end. I thought yeah. it was fun. It was cute. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. I don't, like, it's not... It's nothing that's going to really stick with me, though. It was just kind of, but it was. Yeah, it was, I don't, you know. I don't know that many of the witchy contemporaries have a lot that are going to stick with you, though, either. I guess so. I feel like that's like kind of a prerequisite <laughs> of the well, genre right now. I don't know. I mean, I think, like, I think there are ones that do a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So I guess maybe this is the thing cuz like the, it's there there seems to be this trend right now, right? Where there's been a lot of witchy romances mm-hmm. coming out. Yeah. Um some a lot of them don't even interest me to be honest. I just mm-hmm. never read that many of them. But there are some that I really like like the Sangre Mandana um mm-hmm. one I feel I've not like I've read that one yet. Oh, really? It will be in the vlog next week for my witchy vlog. It's really so. cute. Okay. It's, it's, yeah. So, like, I really enjoyed that a lot as a co- kind of a cozier, mm-hmm. cute romance um, that is witchy. And, like, uh, Celestine Martin had that one. Yeah. I like her stuff. So, I like, there is some stuck with me more. Yeah. Um, did you read Boss Witch by Anna Guire or no? I read the first one okay. in the series. 
So I like I read that and like I feel like that's barely stuck with me. Um, yeah. I, I wonder if as a genre, we've already like off onto this tangent, but as a genre, mm-hmm. if to some extent the point is for them not to stick with you. Kind of like like there's nothing like kind of like cozies can be like whether yeah. it's a cozy fantasy or cozy mystery. Sometimes you're just reading them because like they're just what they are and it's a good time and you walk away and it didn't you know what I mean? Like it didn't have yeah. like substance to it completely, which is not always a bad thing. And maybe sometimes the characters aren't even that enjoyable. But yeah, like, I guess that's yeah. I think my my issue is is like I want to actually be rooting for the characters to be together mm-hmm. and have fun and maybe have something that's a little bit more to it than that even if it doesn't have to be anything that intense personally mm-hmm. it's just not yeah. yeah this i feel like okay and i mean we should talk more about that. <laughs> like, <laughs> i know i was like is this, this is gonna be a, we're gonna back and forth probably a lot yeah. because yeah this is kind of um, the talking off point of it mm-hmm. yeah this i felt like some elements well, you wanted to root for her. I think, yeah, too, I like this her. one big time. Reggie, I was like, what was <laughs> Reggie? Well, you want to root for I... Reggie? Like she was very likable in her like very real messy humanness. Yes. Well, and that's the thing too is like she's kind of an outsider. I think a lot of mm-hmm. times the witchy romances, the heroine is a witch, mm-hmm. and in this case, she's not. She doesn't know magic exists. She accidentally mm-hmm. happens into this job after answering an ad in the newspaper. So For it's rugs. kind of a fish, like a fish out of water story. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. How did you feel, though, about the ages of the people? I like, um, like Drew and Ben and everything? Yeah, like, I guess I just didn't find it believable that he was as old as they said he was. So, I, I my assumption, when people, <laughs> like, don't age, basically, and, like, live extraordinarily long lives in these sort of books, is that their maturity level is going to be, like, really slowed. Mm. Um, that's just what I assume. Yeah. Not that you're frozen at the point at which you like become your aging slows down, but like I just feel like I don't know. I didn't find it unbelievable because at the same time, like, haven't you had moments in which you're like, are we back in high school without some people's behavior? <laughs> like, <Fair. laughs> I don't know that part of it. Like, listen, if I was as old as Drew was, our the witch who hired Reggie, um, I also would be an eccentric and wild old woman who mm-hmm. just does weird things because like why wouldn't you like what do you care at that point you know i i did really like her i thought yeah. she was hilarious and kind of the and i think for him i shoot i did love her and for ben i felt like um he's what he dealt with like as far as his being like blamed for things that maybe weren't like the full story um he I felt like it made sense for how like kind of jaded and somewhat immature he was about things to an extent because he'd been kind of ostracized, which I feel like if you're ostracized in a community that small and um for that long, you become a little more jaded about things and aren't always maybe the most mature so well versed in handling it because I don't feel like he socialized with anyone um, either. Like he socialized with his eccentric aunt and his one friend William kind of. Kind mm-hmm. of. Yeah, that's true. I do always wonder about for people who've lived so long, like how how they're posited to have more progressive views mm-hmm. when they sort of came of age in such different times. Yeah. That is it you wouldn't think that's the case. Mm-hmm. I I feel like. Um but at the same time, I don't know. Like, do you witness enough in the world that you just like change with? You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. Because I, yeah. I mean, if you look at what's going on right now, I've seen a lot of people change their stances because mm-hmm. they didn't know a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So, like, if if in their mindset, I feel like they're they're continuous learning as like sorcerers and sorceresses and all that stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess depending on the person, which I guess then you yeah. would have some people who just sort of stay stuck in 
whatever they think Which and can't get out of it. They talk about at that party. Right. That's true. Yeah. Versus people who are more open to growth and change, which is probably important if you're going to live a really long time. I don't know. It sounds kind of miserable, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, it was, I'm trying to think, like, what else I really have to say about it. I just don't feel like I have that much to say, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Like, it was, it was fun. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it was just, it was a fun book. Like, I, I think some of these books you go into and you're told, like, it's gonna be fun what you read. And they're not mm-hmm. really. Yeah. And then some of them, like this one, do pay off and mm-hmm. is a fun time. I think it has a decent story. I do think, like, I can see the people it wouldn't work for necessarily. But this one to me has more broad appeal than a lot of the other witchy ones I've read so far. Yeah. No, I, I I agree. I thought this one was was mostly just kind of like fun, mm-hmm. entertaining. Um, so I guess the one thing that I think is interesting for the conversation is there's an article that was brought to my attention and I shared it with you. Maybe mm-hmm. you had seen it before too. Somebody yeah. had written an article for Tor.com's blog talking mm-hmm. about some of the issues that they see with the witchy romance trend, mm-hmm. which I thought was, I thought it was interesting. Um, I'm not sure I a hundred percent agree with everything that was in the article, but I did think it was thought provoking. And I think she makes some good points. Um, mm-hmm. But talking about how a lot of the people who are writing witchy romance books are white women, which I mm-hmm. like, I don't, I think there are people who are, not white women who are writing them that she maybe yeah. didn't read. It is true that I would say predominantly, like, but then, yeah. Um, and that sometimes they can end up having, you know, kind of like racist undercurrents to what, so, they're, what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I read the article when it came out because I was a little like, I will admit I was upset because I didn't think the books that got footnoted deserved to be footnoted because, like, I think Celestine Martins, and I know you would agree probably on this, like, her witchy books are very different than the traditional white women witchy books we're getting, and they're fantastic. Yeah. Um, I love them. And my experience, um, like, when I first dived into the subgenre, it was, like, the first one by Anna Guire, The Boss Witch or whatever it's called. Which please. And I was... Yeah, I was, like, very disappointed in that book. Because that book, I felt like, did play into some of that, like, racial stuff with the witches kind of being othered in that. Um, And then as I started to look into more and more of the witchy reads, I noticed that it was this whole thing about the witches being othered in a weird allegory for racism at times. Mm -hmm. Like, the more I looked into the genre and started reading of it, versus, like, in go hex yourself i keep wanting to call it the second book's title which is like what the hex all (laughs) of these titles i cannot they're all the same they're all very Uh, (laughs) they are and i love it and i hate it all at the same time because i mix them all up so when i call this what the hex that's not what i mean Mm -hmm. um but like whereas this one i feel like didn't really play with that it was just like this is a secret group in society off to the side yeah similar in the celestine martins um i'm trying to think of the other ones i've read that were kind of just like this is weird. I've I've read one by an indie author where it actually used the like witchy othering as a way to talk about racism and white supremacy, but it was mm-hmm. by a like biracial author and I thought it was done really well. So I guess that's the thing is like I've seen example and I think too um I mean you haven't read it yet but saying the Mandana's book mm-hmm. Similarly, witches are uh, are othered and are oppressed, but she's also again using it as a metaphor to talk mm-hmm. about some of her own experiences. So I think, yeah, I think it's complicated because I think like the premise of this article was that um, some of the white women writing these are using it as like the the popul- the 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 appeal of these is there these mm-hmm. relatively safe small towns where like white people can read the book and imagine themselves in the position of of being oppressed 
where mm-hmm. it's not actually dangerous to them. Yep. Um, which I think is an interesting conversation to have. And I think that there probably is something to that. I don't know that that's necessarily always what the authors are doing. Like, I think sometimes maybe it is sometimes not whether they do it well. I mean, that's a conversation we could have. Anne Aguirre is an interesting case because, um, she, I like, she is white. Her husband is not, and she Mm -hmm. lives in Mexico. With, yeah. with him and their family. And like, it does seem like her series was trying to intentionally say something about. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it did. And I mean, I've, I've liked other books by Anne. Yeah. So like, I was just extra yeah. disappointed in this one because it just wasn't. I mean, like, I didn't I love wanted. the book, but like, it was, I don't know. Well, and then like, um, I'm like, I pulled up my list. I was like, hold on. <laughs> I've read more of these than I realized. Um, or like Juliet Cross's witch series, uh, Stay a Spell. Um, hmm. book one, and she's a white woman. Book one has a hero, you know, she writes uh, heroes of color, generally speaking, mm-hmm. as a love interest. And, um, there's been critiques on that, obviously, and some of that does involve also that othering. I enjoyed them, um, acknowledging also the very valid critiques on the heroes from people in those identities like uh our first hero i think is sometime a latina and our second hero is an indian um like he's like a bollywood actor type thing so um you know they felt like that it was just kind of barely like sprinkled on if that makes sense for like the characterizations um like those i felt like were better than a lot of them still which is weird but yeah i think I do think that's what's happening. I think it's this idea that, like, almost instead of a small town cop romance, mm-hmm. let's give you a small town witch romance in which you can be the like othered oppressed group, but it's yeah. not like a big deal because it's a witch, you know. And I, I think like yeah, you're the... oppressed, but like nothing bad is actually happening to mm-hmm. you. And I think which it's I very different when that's, it's that was interesting the white author. because like. There are a couple examples of authors of color who've written this Mm -hmm. same sort of thing, except something bad might actually happen from Mm -hmm. a non-witch person, Mm -hmm. which is interesting because that was one of the critiques in the article was that, like, in no case does, like, a normal person actually harm somebody in the community, whereas... So I just, it's interesting, like, it makes me wonder, it does make me wonder if, like, it's that there are some people who are more aware of what they're, I don't know, what they're actually I mean, I think they are more aware of what they're writing, probably, right? Like, because when I read those things from people who have actually been (laughs) oppressed or dealt Mm -hmm. with racism and things like that, like, in a real fashion and an unavoidable way, unfortunately, right, in the world right now. And I feel like they it comes across better in the book, whereas often the other yeah. authors it can feel like they're tr- in a, like trying in a weird way mm-hmm. that just like doesn't make sense always. But I do like I said, my biggest thing with that article is I still feel like she like footnoting the authors of color who are writing the books and doing like a really good job in this like little subgenre that's happening. Yeah. It's just like sad. And I, I know the person who wrote the article and I like them. And I was like, no. Yeah. No. Well, because it, it makes it sound as if like there's not, well, I don't know. So like I understand that like the premise of the article wasn't mm-hmm. focused on that. But I, I think it's a little bit more complicated. Um, yeah. But I mean, I, I, you know, I think she she makes a good, a, a, she has a point that like there is mm-hmm. definitely some of that happening. And it's interesting that that right now that's the subgenre that is mm-hmm. kind of hitting. I feel like in general, um, and I, you know, like I also enjoy this. Like I feel like cozy fantasies and cozy fantasy romances are having a moment. Mm-hmm. And I think because a lot of people are wanting things that feel a little bit more escapist. Yep. Um, but then there are some interesting conversations happening around like what is escapist to different kinds of people. Mm-hmm. 
This is also true. Yeah, I mean, it is interesting. I do think the witch genre of cozy is also, like, very just vibes in a weird way. Because it feels like they're, like, half of the books have, like, no magic. Or, like, just, yeah. like, here's one <laughs> very little. We're done. Like, it's just, like, a sprinkling, a sprinkling of, of magic. And you're, like, it's a witch book. Like, don't give me a witch romance with no magic. <laughs> come on now. I didn't come here for this. I didn't come here for a small town romance. So I came for the witches, <laughs> and you're not giving me witches. Yeah, no, it is uh, often a lot of vibes. Although, go hex yourself has Was magic. Not. Actual is yeah. not has actual magic in it. She she's mm-hmm. transformed into like a mouse, right? <laughs> a cat. A cat. <laughs> she almost eats a mouse. Yes, okay, I right. love that. That scene sold me on Ben so hard. <laughs> yeah. When she, like, untransforms and calls him, is like, I need help. And she's, like, butt naked. And he's like, here's my sweater. I'm getting you out of here. It's fine. It's yeah. going to be okay. Yeah. I was like, look at you caretaking. Oh, my gosh. I just thought his, the, the, his, the, the old woman was just hilarious. What's her? I can't. The name Drew. Is what? Drew. Her Drew, name is Drew. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Drew. Like, she's hilarious. The fact that she was, like, faking being in this magical sleep and had snack wrappers <laughs> under her Okay, bed. first of all, did you see that reveal coming? Because I did not. No. Normally I see these things coming. That They're like, no. she cursed herself. Okay, no. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I think she I was at home to today and it said that. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I stopped for a minute. I was, I was like browsing. I was like, wait, did I hear that right? Yes, she cursed herself. Oh my gosh. It was, it was so and she cursed a pregnant lady to not be able to use doors. <laughs> I was like, this is the worst curse ever. Can you imagine you can't use doors? Oh my god. Mm-hmm. It's like the poor woman's pregnant. Leave her alone. I know. Oh my gosh. That's hard enough. <laughs> but the door thing made sense because she didn't want her to know that she would curse herself. Right. Yeah. No, she was hilarious. Like, I, I think this works because it's like you do have those age dynamics of like mm-hmm. a woman and her friends trend causing trouble. And mm-hmm. I don't know. It was, it was do you think, okay, this is my question because this is a pet peeve I have in contemporaries that is just getting worse and worse by the minute. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's contemporary romances with heroines who are too young to be giving the reference to pop culture they're giving. So let's say it's like a 20 year old who's like referencing sex in the city. Yeah. Like that doesn't like, I'm not saying they don't didn't watch it or don't watch it, but it doesn't fit their age. Do you feel like the golden girls references in this fit her age or not? Cause I can't decide. I don't know. It's hard because like we have so much access mm-hmm. to media now and older media that it's not, you know, it's not unheard of for somebody who is really young to be watching Sex in the City or somebody her age to have watched Golden Girls, especially like with her mom or something, maybe mm-hmm. growing up. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like Golden Girls wasn't too weird of a reference because I feel like it was just, it's been on reruns forever <laughs> now. And I was like, you know, we all kind of have watched some of it more than likely. Yeah. Than not. I feel like, you know, you've caught like a random episode. Yeah. Here or there. But I just, it made me think of that. Like, I I think it stands out to me more when I'm reading YA Mm. and there are teenagers who make references that I'm like, "Mm." oh, yeah, it does stand out to me in YA too. I just don't read a ton of YA anymore. So now it happens in my (laughs) contemporaries. When I read them, I'm like, you're 19. I don't think you're should be referencing like Mr. Big. I just don't feel like that's your most relevant culture pop culture touchstone. No. But okay. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to think what else with this book. I know. I thought there'd be more to talk about it with this. I did too. And because it's not a short book. But it, no, but it just was really, it was just fun. Like, it was one of those things where I was like, this is just fun. It was fun. Like, it was pretty straightforward. It yeah. was, you know. Again, Drew is goals. I want to, like, swan around my house. Drew is gold. Listen, she was super entertaining. I love it. Um, 
but yeah, I don't know. Witchy books are not generally though something I automatic like it's it's not a buzzword for me. So it was a buzzword for me, but it is no longer because they have ruined it. <laughs> they have ruined it. Because uh, I love witches and bugs. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the current trend, I am very cautious to read yeah. witches and bugs. It's got to be something where I know the author or I've had it recommended to me specifically. Mm -hmm. So like Go Hex Yourself was on my radar because I knew Mara had really liked it. Mm -hmm. So I was interested. And I think it is a good one. Um, yeah. I, I just. Yeah. I, I want to read the sequel. Like I'm curious to read Penny's book. Yeah. I think. I mean, at least it'll be fun. I know it's going to be fun. I also, having read Jessica Claire before, that put this on my radar. Yeah. Also knowing, I'm not going to say who, but that she's a pen name for, we're pretty we know sure for, this. Like, it's it's for, not even really a secret anymore. Okay. I was like, is it not a secret anymore or is it still she a secret? She posted pictures of herself to both Instagram accounts. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. This is how much I pay attention on Instagram, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I literally so messaged much. Bethany. I was like, I saw your TikTok thing. <laughs> Uh, and she posted on Insta, I'm sure, too. And I was just like, I'm not over there. <laughs> I don't go on that app. Yeah, no. Jessica Claire is a pen name for Ruby Dixon. Mm -hmm. um, and we, I mean, people had kind of, Mara had done sleuthing and figured yeah. out that, that was probably the I had previously but... sleuthed pre-Mara's, like, whole sleuthing video. And it was funny because she did. And I was like, ha-ha. <laughs> I have someone else confirming my theory. <laughs> Um, yeah, but yeah, that also, of course, made me more interested in it because I feel like she's so good at the aliens mm -hmm. that I just, you know, I had to had to continue and read other things by her. Also, obviously, seeing an author I really enjoyed back in the day, write again under the old pen name is exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was my first by her under this name. Mm hmm. So. I don't think you would like her older ones. They're like billionaire romances of the time. Yeah. But they stood out for being different back then, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. From the other billionaire romances, which I love them. But again, very specific yeah. type of thing. Okay. All right. Um, well, other things. Also, I feel I mean, like this is coming from Berkeley and, Ru and Ice Planets Berkeley just confirms my theory. Oh, yeah triple times like yeah. on top of photos and everything else so although sometimes authors co go come out from different publishers i know i know but i just but in just, this case you know, like it is yeah did you oh that was my next question did you get the Raylo vibes or no because technically this is supposedly Raylo thing i mean i guess ben was my biggest like i was like of course okay. and of course he's ginormous of course. That was the only, like... I mean, I guess now that you say it, I can <laughs> kind of see it. You're welcome. I mean, okay. <laughs> Listen, it's pretty low on the Raylo radar. Yeah. It is no um, Allie Hazelwood. <laughs> like, it is not fully pinging the Raylo sensors, yeah. you know? My right. brain's not like, wait a minute. <laughs> this was 100% Raylo fic. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it was that, the, the height thing, um, and, like, him being ginormous, like, that pinged me. And then her, um, her, like, breasts being small was, like, a thing for a moment in the thing. And, it, it like, it's always in the, like, for whatever reason, every Braylo thing. It's so weird. It's a thing. <laughs> it's so weird. And it's fine. And it's always discussed in that way. Like, it's in a, it's always said in a weird way that I'm like, huh? Yeah. Well, I just, I just, it's weird to me, though, that, like, that's the thing that people take away from Ray. Like, I know. I not know. her personality. Not, like, I don't know. I'm, like, oh, okay. Well, I could see Reggie having some of the, no, like, Ray's, like, strong-headedness. Yeah, abuse. like, I think in this case, she does have some similarities, but I just mm -hmm. think it's weird that, like, that's the thing. I always you know? just think it's funny because it's like he's so tall and like dark haired and this and that. And I'm like, it's not like just how unique looking Adam Driver is. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah. that's not an insult. I just, I would, you would think some of those elements would make it in, but they don't. And I'm always like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's just interesting. 
I mean, now that I'm looking at the cover too, I'm like, oh, oh I the cover is fully. Like, like, now I Raylo totally coded. see the Raylo I thing. Thought, okay, the also cover. from the cover, I thought his hair was longer in the book than it is on the cover. It's very possible. Covers are often not accurate. To the I know. I just was like, wasn't it? But maybe I'm wrong and I misunderstood hair. You know what always who really knows? bugs me? Hmm. Some of the worst inaccurate covers, the Psy Changeling series. Mm-hmm. They're so inaccurate. Most of her characters are people of color. Mm-hmm. All the cover models are white. <laughs> that is why I have none of the U.S. editions, and I only have the U- uh, Australian UK ones. But also, I still think some like I think those are a little more mixed. But yeah, no, I know they're like all white guys, kind of mostly. It's weird. Yeah. Which, it's funny because, like, very few of her main characters are white Mm -hmm. in the books. The majority of them are, like, multiracial or, like, Mm -hmm. some kind of, like, BIPOC in some way. So, I just, like... At least some of them look ambiguous on the UK covers. Yeah. Some. Not all of them. Yeah. But, yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. It's fine. My favorite one, you don't even see his face on the US cover. Maybe one day we'll get some accurate covers. That would be fun. That'd be nice. Don't, no, don't will that. We'll get some really weird illustrated ones now. <laughs> oh, no. That's all we need. Please, no. Paranormal illustrated covers. Oh, God. It's coming. <laughs> I hate to break this to you. No. But it will happen. No. Uh, you know what? All the Psy Changeling audiobooks are in mm-hmm. the Audible Plus catalog right now. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. I do own my favorite. But I do need to read the uh, the second series. Yeah, I need to catch up. So I um, I just read a couple so far early, earlier this month that I'm going to try to play catch up a little bit. Am but. I really ahead of you in that series? That's wild. It's a long series, and I took a long break. (laughs) You didn't. I read all of it last year, so. Okay. Well, besides Trinity. Like, I have not read the next section. So, I I just, this month, read, I think, Shards of Light. Okay. Which is, I think, the last book in the first cycle. Mm Mm-hmm. So. Nice. You're ready. I'm ready. Everyone says the next group is even better, so. Awesome. Also, I know she finally, there's finally like a, a, a queer character in the, in the new ones. That's exciting too. Which is cool because that was definitely missing, I think, but also makes sense for the time they were coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, this might just be a short episode. I'm like, there's. I know. I don't know. I don't know that there's. If anybody has questions or comments um, who's watching, feel free to leave them. I know some of our recent stuff has been not actually live, but we are actually live right now. And I know we have a few people watching. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you have any topics you want us to address in terms of witchy romances or discuss before we wrap things up, let us know. Because, yeah, there's just a lot less to talk about than we realize. (laughs) I, yeah, I didn't. I mean, I guess we should have done two books. Oh well. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I would have mixed them up though. I know because that was my other thing. They're is I would, cause I'm doing this blog where I'm reading a bunch of them, and I was like, okay, you have to read what the hex or go hex yourself, like right mm-hmm. before, <laughs> because you were not gonna remember this book compared to the other books you're reading. I do have a copy and really want to read Kiss and Spell, which is Celestine Martin's second book mm-hmm. in their series that just came out. So I have a yes. copy of that. Um, I am reading that soon. I want to read that one. Her stuff's good. Yeah. I um, I want to read that one. I'm reading The Regular Society of Witches this year, finally. Last year, it was so hyped. I was kind of scared to read it and not like it. So I like wanted to give it a little bit of room. I, I, think, it's, I think you're going to like it. I do too. I just sometimes I get nervous when like everyone around me loves a book. Yeah. And I'm gonna be like, no. No, I think I think you'll like it. I'd be surprised if you disliked it. Um, I'm reading another one right now. Um that I'm actually kind of curious about and think I'm gonna like, and it's not the witchy wed by April Asher, uh, which she has uh plus size main characters. 
So I'm very curious to see if it like turns out really good. Nice. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I it's it's just interesting where we're going with this mm-hmm. like trend. I don't I don't hate it and I don't love it. Like I, I'm I'm open to like mm-hmm. see what really happens with this. I think the thing is just that there aren't a lot of standouts. I think Sango Mandana's mm-hmm. book is the one that's really taken off. And I think because it's got something more to it than a lot yeah. of them do. Um, yeah. I and I think uh, the Celestine Martin, better. unfortunately, is going. it creates bias on the cover for people, I'm sure, to not pick it up. I would love, her books are so good, though. I would love to mm-hmm. see her kind of pop off. because I would, too. I, I really They're so good. Them. Like, that first book was, I mean... Like, just so good. I was stunned was so by it. so good. And it has the cozy element. It has a merman. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. people need to read them. They're so good. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Book two yeah. has, like, a fae, I think. I don't know. I need to read it. He's I have pointy have, ears. He, he, he might be. I might be wrong, but he's something. Yeah. All right. Shall we do okay, new releases? Okay, well... Speaking of like new releases, <laughs> we are gonna do on my radar where we'll sh- talk about some recent and upcoming book releases and romance we're excited about. Um, but as always, if you enjoy the podcast, we do appreciate if you take a moment to rate and review us so we can reach more listeners. And if you're interested in getting exclusive bonus content with every episode, consider supporting us on Patreon or channel memberships. Huge thanks to all of our supporting patrons, including our world-expanding patron, Stephanie. We do really appreciate all of you. You make what we do possible. And our bonus content this week will be me talking about New York Comic Con, all the bookish stuff that was happening there, and like maybe the fact that I <laughs> had it done and was in, in pain and had to get an emergency root canal yesterday. <laughs> yep, probably. You know, all the... Fun things you expect. Bethany is stronger than all of us. <laughs> I'm just like hard headed. I'm sort of like, yes, I'm in pain, but I'm gonna push. Listen, it I, I, paid I understand. I understand this. You get oh it. Yeah, I'm feeling much better now. Thankfully, thank goodness for dentists. <laughs> I just wish dental insurance actually covered things. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a real thing. It's absurd, like the limits on coverage. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Mm. Okay. Romance. Mm-hmm. Why don't you start? What, give me one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, October third. This just came out. The Hurricane Wars by Thea Guanzan. Guan. I'm. I don't know how to say her last name. I'm sorry because I did not look it up ahead of time. So instead of fumbling it five times, we're just gonna roll with it. Uh, this is another Raylo fic that was beloved and got pulled. So many. <laughs> it's just like my, I just am always like, I have to know. I have to know if it's good. Like, it's so I'm, funny I'm because I was, now. I am not even a Raylo girly. I'm not like either. Ray and Finn. Ray and Finn with, in like a, in a, and in a I wanted the, I, and I, I wanted a throuple. I wanted a love triangle. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, I wanted a throuple through and through. Like, polyamory for all of them. I'm not either, but I do like Raylo books that have been pulled for fiction. I don't know why. I just, I've enjoyed them. I, I think, I think the dynamic tends to work pretty well when it is not me reading the fic. Cause I don't think I would like it as a fic, but um, this is supposed to be like a really interesting, like sci-fi fantasy situation, fantasy romance, magic. They have to work together to overcome and like save the world or destroy it. Who knows which, I mean, they're going to save the world. We know this, but I feel like it sounds like from what I can tell from the reviews, the fantasy people hated it and the romance people liked it. So I was like, I'm good. I am good to go. (laughs) I'm probably going to like it. So if you go in not expecting like really solid fantasy, you're good Mm -hmm. to go. So yeah, I just, I think this one sounds interesting. I've got the audio sitting in my audible right now Mm -hmm. and I'm just like kind of waiting to be ready to like sink my teeth into a, fantasy yeah. romance awesome. uh okay the one that i'm probably most excited about is if you'll have me by uni it is a upper ya new adults um 
sapphic romance graphic novel that is the most adorable thing I have read all year. It's so freaking cute. It follows um, a girl who is a college freshman, and she's this, like, nerdy, shy, introverted black girl who has a crush on the the Asian hottie who's seducing all the girls. <laughs> And they have, like, a friendship and, like, a romance that's, like, develops. And it's just the most adorable sapphic romance. So, uh, yeah, definitely pushing people to go pick that up. It's very cute. Uh, On the other side of this, I've got a gay romance for you that is own representation. So that's always exciting. Uh, Stars in Your Eyes by Case and Calendar just came out. This is a celebrity romance in which... One of them badmouths the other one to, like, the press, and they have to fake date to, like, make it look like they don't hate each other. Um, Everyone I know that's read it loved it. I'm, like, I'm, like, a so-so on celebrity person, Mm -hmm. so I'm, but I'm intrigued enough about this plot to, like, read it. Um, The cover's really cute, and, I mean, it's Case and Calendar's adult debut, so I'm very intrigued to see how it goes. Like, adult romance debut. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Well, I liked his, he did um, a novella, an Audible original novella that Mm -hmm. I liked. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I don't think I've listened to that one yet, but I remember it came out and I was like, I need to listen to that. The the reviews on that are a time. I I feel like half of my review was just pushing back on what other people said in their reviews. Valid. But, uh, yeah. They apparently didn't know what they were getting, I'm assuming, when they read it, so. I, well, they were like, it's a whole thing, you'll have to. I'll go read them later. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Okay, so Iris Kelly Doesn't Date by Ashley Herring Blake, which we're very excited about. Mm -hmm. And I think for November, we're going to do an Mm -hmm. episode on that entire series. I think it's the Bright Falls series, which is exciting. Yeah. so, because I, Delilah was one of my favorite books last year. Same. And I have been meaning to catch up and have not. So now is going to be the time. So we're going to, we're going to read all three and discuss them mm-hmm. in next month's episode. So that'll be fun. Yeah, I don't excited. actually know what the plot of this one is about. I haven't really looked. Uh, it's the, it's like local theater. Fake okay. dating. So yeah. it'll be a fun time. Uh, then a Christmas book that like piqued my interest is Snowden for Christmas by Jacqueline Snow. This is about a sorority mom and a football coach. Basically, she ends up not believing the blizzard reports and gets snowed in and stuck and he comes and saves her and they end up like snowed in together. So it just sounds like it's either going to be really, really cute or I'm going to hate it. I don't know which I'm very picky about my Christmas books, but I was like, this sounds unique actually from Mm -hmm. a lot of what I've read. So I'm, yeah. I'm hopeful. Yeah. Um, one that I'm going to be reading is The Christmas Cabin by Michelle Major. She does like all of these little small town contemporary romances set in this one town that are interconnected and has, and I, I've read most, a lot of them and I just, I enjoy them. They kind of like, I would say walk the line between romance and women's fiction. They're kind of like, mm-hmm. like a foot in both lanes and um, her latest one is The Christmas Cabin. We've got somebody like returning um, a, sing- a single mom who had left her small town and hated it and thought she'd never be back, who's now coming back, of course. And um, there's like, she's going to see her ex husband. <laughs> so it's like a second chance uh, type romance, I think. So that sounds fun. Hopefully that'll be fun. Uh, and then for me, my last one is The Duke Starts a Scandal by Sophie Jordan, who's just like one of those historical authors that for me, like, may not always be a five star, but she's always like good, decent, at least. This one follows a duke and a housekeeper. So I'm just very intrigued for how that's going to work. And the cover is like him pressed against a wall and the housekeeper behind him. So I'm just like, I have to read this. Interesting. Read this. Interesting. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, just, yeah. just a nice power dynamic happening here in this mm-hmm. cover. And, you know, uh, she's not the bride he needs, but she's everything he desires. So give me. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I just need love it. That. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I was like, even if I don't love it, like, I just need mm -hmm. it. This cover, it's too good. Yeah. I had a couple other ones on my radar. Uh, a Christmas to Remember by Beverly Jenkins is part of her Blessings series, but I think it's the first, maybe one of the first holiday romances. And she's always, always pretty good. And then mm -hmm. Better Hate Than Never by Chloe Leese mm -hmm. is a contemporary retelling of The Taming of the Shrew, which I love a good contemporary romance take on Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I really bad. liked the first book in the series was Much Ado About Nothing. And I think the last one is going to be Romeo and Juliet. So I haven't read them yet, but that makes me more intrigued. The first not, one is really good. That's what I've heard. Like, I've not read any yeah. Chloe Lee's yet. And everyone it was yells my first. So yeah, no. I want, I, but I do, I do want to read Um it. Oh, and then Anna Wong's uh, King of Greed comes out Tuesday. Oh, nice. um, and I'm very excited for that. I have an arc of it and I will be reading it this week. So it'll be in my early november vlog because witchy vlog is first so I don't, i'm like filming things i'm like i don't know when any of this i is understand it's, out, it, so it is a, it is a struggle when you're trying to make content <laughs> yeah so it is I'll, I'll i'll have a review up on release day so but I, i've enjoyed her new uh sin series more than i've enjoyed i, I liked her first series but i like the series even more that's the best cool. way i can put it this is a marriage in trouble so i'm just here yeah. for it also like that's that is my book nib awesome okay so yeah that's what we have i will be back october 20th with liana to finish up our witcher read-along for the year discussing season of storms by andre sapkowski and then me and izzy will be back um like the beginning of first couple weeks of november mm -hmm. to talk about all the bright falls books so yeah. read along sad. with us have a great week and again, this has been Chapter 3 Podcast. We're your hosts, Bethany and Izzy. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Chapter 3 Podcast. And you can also find us on our individual YouTube channels. Don't forget to join us uh, October 20th for the next episode. And this episode's bonus content will be available to patrons in the next few